So hello and welcome to FL Mixologist, the place on the internet thingy where we really need to stop going to the toilet uh, uh, with our mobile phone uh, because obviously I, I don't do porn and that kind of stuff. Instead I spend all my time kind of scrolling on the phone trying to find kind of cheap junk on the internet to purchase. And case in point this unit here, after a week, kind of this, this little jewel turns up um after making a cheap purchase and actually uh <clears throat> well it turns out that it was cheap for a reason so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna um so i'm gonna bring a bit closer and show you some of the details that we're gonna have to work out uh in the uh, in the course of this episode okay so first of all um the, le, le, let's let's go over the basics okay this is a 390 uh, CFM Holly uh, as fitted here to you know Robo V8 that that's the most popular uh, thing this units are uh, go on um, and as you can see here this was a uh, an auto choke carb electric choke carb uh, which this units generally are um, unfortunately it's been kind of eliminated deleted and I think we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna try and see if we can restore it and and put a and put another electric choke here for obvious reasons i mean it, it makes it makes it kind of nice and original the base plate is not as bad as it seems uh but it is a little bit on the um, on the heavy side and here there is a, there is a bit of cor corrosion um on the throttle plates let me see if you can see them right there there and there so that needs to be kind of sorted out also this is a bit sticky and this is mm, okay so this is going to need a bit of attention so again but note something something really interesting here as well i've got a complete uh well one of the idle screws is missing here uh, and look at this lovely little Kind of contraption slash uh, redneck engineering type for the accelerator pump which incidentally if you look here look at this this accelerator pump doesn't even work great so obviously this car has kind of more issues than vogue so what we need to do now is to start tearing into this unit uh, with the view of you know making it good and uh, making it live again um one thing please try to avoid this sort of things um that that just that just rubbish that doesn't work and it doesn't even actuate um the accelerator pump which isn't good but anyway that's a bit of kind of public service announcement let's tear into the unit and see what we can find inside it i'm not i'm not feeling very positive already haven't seen the outside of it and i know this i know this little bit so anyway let's just try and get on with it Okay, I think I worked out what the problem is here, and it's quite easy to 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 spot. You don't need to be a clairvoyant um, to to see what what's going on in this unit. So I'll, I'll bring you a bit closer so you can see so you can see exactly what what my thoughts are uh, because you need to see this up close. Okay, so I think I think what what happened here is that, and this is exactly as the car was taken out. I think somebody here tried to start. Somebody made a start on trying to restore this, and very quickly got frustrated with this unit and decided to just you know abandon ship and and stop the process. Uh, for example, this car didn't have a um, a gasket between the body uh, and the base plate so that tells me that somebody has already been in and just kind of slammed it back together maybe because they realized that there's quite a bit of corrosion in here and they didn't know how to deal with it that may be a problem also this is absolutely knackered so somebody must have must have opened up the carb and said do you know what nah not doing that 
just just well, I'm gonna purchase another one and I'm gonna just throw this um, on the internet so some idiot that's in the toilet uh, on his phone is gonna buy it and it's gonna be his problem not mine um, whoops I see how that's it's happening to me now <clears throat> luckily for me uh, this is this is something that for me is quite common and it's just part of the course really so now what we need to do is need to do the final disassembly um, but before I do that well it's always very important when you when you are disassembling a carb to check for certain things like for example here I can see that that the level of, of fuel is incorrect in the primary and the secondary so obviously somebody was kind of you know messing about with with the fuel level so it's always, so it's always good to know this this tells me that probably needle and seat assemblies were bad um look at the look at the state of this can you hear that this is extremely crusty extremely and and look it's so it's all corroded in there so obviously this is knackered so what i need to do now is i need to kind of do the final the final disassembly and start putting this unit on the ultrasonic cleaner to to give it a little bit of a clean and hopefully start the process of restoration Okay, so as part of the <clears throat> major overhaul of this carb uh, that we shouldn't have bought, but anyway, um, one of the things that I want to show you is I'm going to do a little upgrade um, to this carb whilst I'm building it. And this concerns um, some detail on the shaft, the throttle plates, and what do I secure them with. So let me bring it a little bit closer because you need to see it kind of very much up close all right so this is the base plate and as you can see here this is purely for illustrative purposes and the reason i do this is because these are two secondary shafts so this is the original secondary shaft that's going to go in the bin and this is like so to show what a typical installation is so these are the standard like holy screws then you've got they always like protrude kind of a bit out there and there and then they are quite high profile here and there and you've got obviously the um, this semicircular shaft like so so what I'm going to do is this is the primary shaft that's gonna go um, that's gonna go in the car obviously and as you can see first of all the screws are smaller profile than this and also if you can see here this shaft has been thinned down and the screws they don't come come out as much as these ones so therefore that means that i am basically diminishing the surface the the restriction caused by the surface area of the screws the shaft and the throttle itself so obviously there's more air flowing through this side than this side if you can if you can see it there yeah and this modification if i do it obviously on on all four corners it's going to be about it's going to be good for about 10 cfm so this this should this should bring the carb up to kind of from a 390 kind of comfortably to a 400 CFM easy. Obviously, as you can see here, this is the sh secondary shaft and it has had the same treatment. So this was kind of, um, this had the shape like that and now it's been shaved um, <clears throat> and this is ready to be uh, chemically treated and ready for just, you know, ready for installation basically. So that's the next thing I need to do. Now some of you guys might find this a little bit helpful and as you can see here I'm doing the final stage of the chemical blacking process and so these things are marinating for about you know 15 minutes thereabouts and then I take them out 
and I dry them overnight just just pure dry air dry that's it but this is quite a neat feature that I've got here because you can see I've got this Heath Robinson in contraption and this is what I use when I only want to do the part of the shaft so now I'm, I'm doing the that stage three of the process just to the shaft because it's very difficult to do it if I try to include all this kind of top bit in a sense so I thought that might be a little tip uh, that you guys might want to try okay so here we go and here you can see the base pedal eight completed and look at that when you give it when you give it full throttle you can see a much less a much less of a restriction both in the primary and the secondary so i think this unit is going to work really well um like this uh, it's going to perform certainly much better than 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 a standard car would do um most most certainly a, a full throttle you're gonna get you're gonna get a nice little bit of flow through the four barrels there one of the things that we need to do we need to sort this out uh, this uh, kind of contraption for an accelerator pump and the other thing if you remember that we had only one of these um, uh, idle mixture screws so obviously I need to uh, get another one from my box of uh, tricks um, just, just to make sure they are exactly the same so I can you know put this unit back together I'll start getting all those parts together uh, and see where I end up um, with that and I'll show you once I'm more or less ready to uh, assemble the unit mm -hmm. okay so what I've what I've got now is I've got basically all the you know sub assemblies of this car ready to go I do need to check though the fuel bowls as you can see this is this is the right setup for them for the height yeah, but what I need to check is that I need to check it's not leaking. How do I do that? Well, glad you asked. So I'll show you. I get a vacuum pump. And I've shown this stuff on the channel time and time again. And basically what you do is you put your vacuum pump on here. And you just give it a few bumps. <laughs> and basically if the needle stays there, uh, which this one is, then that means you're golden. You're good to go. This is this is this fuel bowl is not going to leak. So now what I need to do is um, put the fuel bowls um, together, and that would be kind of the basic of the build. And then what I need to do is I need to do the vacuum secondaries and the choke because we're doing we're building this car back up with the choke because it came with nearly everything. Oops, I can see straight away that we've got a problem. So what I need to do here is basically I need to bend this, this, so that actually it's sitting on top of this, because if not, it's not going to actuate uh, the accelerator pump properly. Once that is done, we're ready, we're ready to go. One important detail that's often overlooked in installations is when you're when you're installing installing this back up, 
what you need to do is you need to always renew this cork seal and sometimes it comes with kits sometimes it doesn't you need to be a bit careful and what i do is i put a bit of petroleum jelly so that i can kind of secure it and in that way i can install it um i can install it on the car kind of a bit easier <clears throat> okay before i before i uh, kind of end up kind of installing this unit i thought i might as well show you how the innards of a holy auto choke works so basically you have got this piston here that is operated by a vacuum and this is your your choke qualifier in 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 other earlier versions of the carb you have or in other carbs you have like a separate vacuum operated thing that that, that qualifies the choke via vacuum uh, but your uh, holy doesn't need this because you've got the vacuum coming in coming in through this passage here and then you've got a like a gasket that could be this model here or there is there is another gasket that that is like a like a paper version of this that has a like a slot here but it's the same thing and then you've got your coil as you can see this is a brand new coil and what you do is you need to put the coil with the slot there and and you need to put it like that so now this coil is actually actuating the choke as you see there and then what you need to do is you need to obviously secure it uh, with this tab here with the three screws so that's kind of the innards of a holly choke for you to just have a look at how it works so here it is in all its splendor this unit as you can see is completely rebuilt choke actuates fine I, I put all the kind of vacuum plugs uh, where they go here and here so you shouldn't have any problem you shouldn't have any problem with with loss of vacuum and obviously choke is brand new as you can, as you can see here um, so yeah this unit is pretty much ready to go ready to be dispatched um, to the customer the one thing i'm going to say though is that this sort of um major overhaul as i'm as, I, as i'm going to call it uh is certainly not a diy job why uh due to the insane amount of parts that i had to replace to make this car live again yeah in no particular order this uh, the, this primary shaft is complete junk bin then i needed to um, get a brand new choke assembly which you may or may not have very few people have them um, then i had to put a brand new um, idle mixture screw that it was missing again you need to have it because if you don't have it the cup's not going to live again um Neil and see how well uh, okay that that is a bit of a luxury so it kind of looks better but still um so therefore I and then I had to put the um obviously the pump arm again because what was there was a bit goofy wasn't working very well and now this pump arm is working well so therefore that so what I, what I'm trying to say is that this this was a project Kind of for somebody like me that I've got a, a very wide range of spare parts for this unit and to be honest if for a, for a DIY it would have been a total nightmare it wouldn't have been uh, a goer and it would have generated uh, more frustration than pleasure so obviously be careful what you're buying uh, whilst you're kind of scrolling on the phone uh, on the toilet because you might get burned. In this particular case, I'm okay, uh, and I built a relatively very good unit, which even a slightly better performance at the standard, but um, it's it's now a finished project. Uh, I'm glad it's over so I can, you know, move on with the next project. So anyway, I want to say thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, put it down in the comments. And if not, I will see you in the next episode.